And Project Solo was used using um, communications equipment in C-130s that fly over the battlefield. Now generally what's talked about is the idea of propaganda. They broadcast from these C-130s the various messages uh, that they want people to hear. But one of the other things they do is they piggyback signals on other carriers. In other words, the broadcast already going on in the area. In other words, the Muslim music and prayers that all of these troops were listening to every day. Um, they would piggyback a signal on that that would create uh, anxiety and fear as an emotional state. And so they, they disadvantaged their adversary because it was targeting them through their own radio broadcast and none of our troops were paying much attention to. But they had this tremendous unexplainable anxiety and fear and then when the bombardment started or even when anything happened, uh, they were much more willing to give up. Um, according to Scottish media, that was probably the most effective uh, weapon used and, and how fast that war uh, collapsed. People who study psychology and study advertising as well understand that there are certain things and one of them in particular is the frequency following response where the brain will lock on to a flickering uh, light for instance. Well if you embed that within something as simple as an advertisement on television. So you, you have somebody sitting in a fairly passive position. They're probably running in a low beta or even, even lower, even into the alpha ranges where they're very, very um, already geared for accepting suggestion. But then you create a flicker rate, even for as few as 30, 40 seconds, uh, that entrains the brain and drops it even lower until you're in a very suggestive state and then just deliver the overt message. There's nothing that is regulated in that regard. And yet the science is well known, but the regulations don't exist. But these are very sophisticated uh, folks, particularly in political um, races. We are dealing with people spending billions these days on presidential races, um, incorporating this kind of technology that is not illegal and is not regulated uh, should be expected uh, through media. Is, is once, you, once you regulate, then you also disclose. You disclose the carriers, you disclose the methods and the means. And one of the things the Morrises suggested uh, on, a, on a program that ran in Canada on CBC, and the Morrises were part of the group that introduced this whole concept of, of new weapon systems during the first uh, Reagan-Bush administration. And you know what, what they suggested was something as simple as putting a microchip on electrical appliances and computers could screen out all of these signals because the carriers are already known. Now they couldn't talk about the research in the U.S., but they openly talked about what they'd observed in the Soviet Union. And instead of developing chips to screen out signals, our government has proposed the opposite to develop chips that allow them easy entry into your systems. Uh, just the opposite of what should be taking place. Uh, we're not the only country involved in this. You know, the, the, this whole realm has developed, uh, I think, another race, a race that began perhaps much further back in history than many would care to admit. But when you look at the influence of human behavior uh, through um, external means, there is plenty of evidence today that exists in the record. Uh, that we point to uh, very carefully in the work that we've done to show that these are things that are not impossible and that they've been around for now several decades. It's, it's, it is the way it is. I mean, when you, when you look at propaganda as a concept, uh, we use it, everybody uses it, it's your message. Um, and you know, now it's focus groups and polls and spin and figuring out how to uh, compartmentalize and prepare a message. Even the military spends a good deal of time looking at it. The thing that they're most concerned about is what's called the CNN factor. Uh, and that's the idea that when you see it, the American public rela relates and reacts to visual images very strongly and very rapidly. And so you control that flow. You do it by controlling the film clips that you release. You do it by controlling uh, the press releases in a very specific way, controlling the movements of press within battlefield environments as much as you can. Um, and you embed them, and the deal is you do it our way or you don't get, you don't get to come back. And the, and the fact is, it is a manipulation of the media that takes place. And it's a staging of how to gain uh, the public's acceptance for issues. In fact, one of the most outstanding documents in this area when you deal with changes in military technologies is one produced by the U.S. Army War College called The Revolution of Military, military Affairs and Conflicts Short of War. And within that document, they talk about things like implantable technologies uh, for tracking uh, troop movements. They talk about knocking out aircraft with devices that work on electromagnetic fields that override their controls, cause them to crash, but leave no residual damage. And then they talk about the constitutional questions. And what they say when they get into the constitutional questions is 
this would probably violate the Constitution if we use this against, say, international drug traffickers or terrorists. Now, they wrote this in 1989. And what they equated the revolution of military affairs with was the advances in military technology taking today. They equated to the introduction of gunpowder in the Middle Ages in Europe or atomic weapons in, the, in this last century. That this change was so profound, the RMA, that it would change forever the way in which wars were fought. These technologies that we're talking about today are part of that RMA. The other thing they said is, because the American public wouldn't accept them, because the American public would see them as a violation of the Constitution, the only way they could be introduced is an environment of fear. And what environment do we have today? And you compare it. International terrorism, if you add it all up for American lives in the last 10 years, 15,000 people have died, more or less. A lot of people, No, I don't want to make light of that. But according to Harvard University, uh, medical malpractice has resulted in that same 10-year period in a million American deaths. Now how come that one doesn't get any coverage? And the solution for that, half of them are drug interactions, which could be easily stopped by data banking the drugs you take so that the machine can tell you when not to take something because physicians can't do it. It's impossible. There's too much out there in the pharma. And yet, what issue do we focus on? The one that is going to usher in the revolution of military affairs and generate a high enough fear level for people to set their civil liberties aside in exchange for the illusion of safety and security.